Hello guys, how are we all? It's uh, been a couple of weeks, maybe even several weeks since I've seen you last. It's been a little bit of uh, time between drinks with these videos and I am sorry for the delay. There's been a few little bits and pieces that have kind of contributed to that. Uh, number one, I was a little bit unwell a couple of weeks back, uh, two to, about two weeks ago. I had a terrible cough and a cold and I was pretty sure that none of you wanted to see me here coughing and spluttering about so um i did kind of say well let's just take some time to sit back and get a little bit better as my wife's birthday my beautiful lovely wife and we went down to the coast which was really really fun um but that took away another extra week ish out of my time but we're back now i'm back here again uh it's been a while but to that uh, i want to continue the series that we started before which is uh the next in the top figs in the world and for those that are playing along at home we had the uh, uh, the number 40 to number 21 is the first video we had then the number 30 to number 21 and today we're going to be looking at the number 20 to number 11 figs top figs in the world um, you might notice I'm not in the grow tent today as I was in my last videos um, as things in Canberra move along we're, we're starting to really solidly get into spring so when I put that first video out, we hadn't even had a single day above 20 degrees. In fact, we even didn't even hit 20 degrees at that point Celsius. Uh, as we speak today, the majority of days is, are above 20. We've got no frost days on the calendar. Uh, it is really, really warming up out there. Now, the rule of thumb for Australians are if you want to do things like plant your, well in Canberra at least, plant your tomatoes out and do things like that, we have to wait till Melbourne Cup Day, which is next Tuesday, because that generally signals the last day of frost for Canberra. But we've been a little bit warm in the last week or two weeks and I haven't had to worry. So I've started to move all of the figs out of the tent. Uh, most of them are now outside and um, they're looking really, really good. They're starting to put on some growth. There are a few of them that have suffered a little bit from me uh, maybe transferring them into the sun a little bit too quickly. But I'm sure they'll get over that in the next few weeks and especially as the season continues we will have some spectacular figs to look at and maybe even be able to try some braber crops. We've got some brabers coming on and I'm very, very excited. I love this time of year. This is the time of year where uh, the flowering, the spring flowers on the apples and the pears and the plums are all kind of uh, fading away, but they're now starting to turn into those little fruit buds and we can start thinning them out and getting everything ready to go for um, those kind of summer and, uh, and, and autumn fruits, which is really, really exciting. So lots of things happening over here. I'm, uh, I've, I'm having a really good time. But today we're here about a list. We're going to be finishing our list or we're going to be moving towards the completion of this list where we're talking number 20 down to 11 in the top figs in the world. Now, if you haven't uh, followed my previous videos and you're jumping in for the first time, essentially, in a nutshell, what I did was scoured all the forums for as far back as I could uh, started to collate the information when people were talking about their top figs and started to assign them a score. And then using that score, I added them all together until we ended up with this list of figs, which we, or I, am calling the top figs in the world. So without much further ado, let's jump straight into it. And number 20 on the list, uh, we've had a couple of these, uh, this particular fig type turn up uh, previously in the list, and there'll be even more to come. But number 20 on the list today is Strawberry Verte. Now, Strawberry Verte is another Adriatic type fig. Now, the Adriatic figs, we've already talked about them a little bit. The Adriatic figs are a, a green to sometimes yellowy skinned fig. They have a bright red interior. They usually have strawberry or berry-like flavors, and they are, are typically very hardy, and they've got a lot of good characteristics which make them a fig that you would like to have in your collection. Now this particular fig was uh, discovered or was introduced to the community by John Verdick. Uh, he was the owner of the old Figs for Fun forum and uh, he kind of distributed that amongst members and today at least in the US, not so common, I don't even know if it's available in Australia but definitely not common in Australia. Um, Strawberry Verte is not one that we see over here. Now some people have said that it's very very similar to number 40 on our list which was Green Bataglia. 
And some people have called uh, green Bataglia improved strawberry verte. Now, whether or not that means it's a newer fig variety, uh, a newer variety that's entered the scene and people are saying perhaps it's a, maybe it's a sport of strawberry verte or maybe there's something else going on. And they're still both extremely excellent figs that you could add into your collection. Now, this is extremely uh, popular fig on my list that came into number 20. We scored 60 points for this particular fig and 18 people voted into their top five figs. Now, moving straight on to number 19 and yet another Adriatic type. This is a fig called White Madeira number one. Now, White Madeira number one is another Adriatic type. So all of those characteristics we just talked about are still there. This is a fig that was introduced uh, in 2013 to the, again, Figs with Fun forums by a forum member named Tam. Now, Tam uh, got it from a friend who also apparently got it from another friend who originally sourced it from Madeira. Island. Now at the time apparently a number of different cuttings came along and there was a white Madeira number one labeled and a white Madeira number two and maybe a white Madeira number three and who knows what else. Well the takeaway from this is white Madeira number one came out as the standout fruit. When it started to fruit and they tried the flavors it was very clear that it was an excellent tasting and uh, visually beautiful fruit which kind of was then populated throughout the forums and is one that is today extremely famous. Now Madeira Island is um, is an island in Spain and it's one of those um, islands that seems to have a little bit of a cult following when it comes to figs. So whether it's a white Madeira number one or a black Madeira or a Madeira Island fig, these figs are very commonly uh, associated with some of the best figs that are out there. So uh, this is a fig with a small to medium fig, obviously green skin, deep red interior, strawberry to raspberry to strong berry-like flavours. Uh, very excellent fig. Some people say with this particular fig that it is extremely rain resistant and it can take a lot of rain. But then on the opposite side, a lot of people are saying that it isn't actually uh, rain resistant at all. And even a small amount of rain will cause it to split. So whether or not they're talking about the same fig, who knows? Um, it's one of those things and it's a common theme Now we're going to see throughout our list today where we have figs that potentially have a number of synonyms and a number of names describing uh, potentially different varieties talking about with, that have been named the same fig or the same fig that have been uh, propagated out to many different names it's, uh, as the list goes up and we start to become uh, closer to these more and more famous figs uh, this, becomes, uh, this becomes more prevalent this particular fig though, White Madeira number one, came in our 19th spot. It scored 62 points on our list and had 19 people vote for it in our top five figs. And moving straight on to number 18, we have one of those figs that I just kind of alluded to, a fig that has a little bit of a questionable history, um, potentially some misnaming in there, potentially some synonyms. And this fig is called Laterula or Italian Honey. Now this fig, although being called Italian honey, seems to have potential origins back in France. It seems to be synonymous, or is possibly synonymous, with a French fig called White Marseille. Now White Marseille, if you've watched my previous tasting videos, which I'm 100% sure all of you have done, uh, was a very poor performer for me this year. Now Australia is a little bit finicky in our figs. We don't necessarily have uh, the collection of great uh, figs that you would have over in the US or potentially in Europe. Uh, but the, the White Maasai that I had, although being a young fig, was very disappointing. The story with this particular fig, though, Laterula, Italian honey, maybe uh, White Maasai, is that there was a nurseryman. His name was uh, Mr. B.R. Amend, and he, he owned this nursery, and he had some Italian visitors through. And these Italians were touring the nursery, and they came across this fig, this white kind of honey-style fig. They tried the fig, and they said, and they turned to him, and they said, this fig seems very, very similar to a fig we have back at home called Laterula, which means white honey. And so when you are faced with this, when you're a, a fig uh, seller and maybe it's a little bit of a cynical take from me I'm not sure but when you've got these kind of uh, opportunity in front of you when you're selling a fig like white Marseille which is also a synonym for the fig Blanc which is very highly likely this is the uh, the fig Mr. Armand had 
and then some Italian uh, guests come along and say, well, this is very, very similar to a ladder ruler. The temptation there is to sell them as maybe both. Because if we sell uh, them all as ladder ruler, well, you're not likely to buy two ladder ruler trees or two white Maasai trees or two Blanc trees. But maybe you'll buy a Blanc and a ladder ruler. Or maybe you'll buy a Blanc and a white Maasai. And so in that way, I believe that there's many figs out there that are actually propagated or under the same the, the same variety spread out. Um, I think that it's, uh, it's perhaps cynical, as I said, but I, I do think it happens a fair bit. Either way, this particular figure, uh, it says that it was potentially also donated to uh, the USA by a French organization called the Conservatoire Botanique Nationale Mediterranean. Uh, and that was uh, that Blanc or White Maasai fruit that came through. Now, regardless of whether or not these are synonyms or if these are separate uh, varieties, this is a honey fig. It has a green to yellow to white exterior with a yellow to amber flesh it has a uh, particularly strong honey flavors and although it is a little bit linear in its flavoring it can be said much like the Peter's honey to be a fig that is almost like having a spoonful of honey uh, and it is a, a fig that is extremely popular it has small to medium to sometimes large shaped fruit and it scored 65 points on my list today getting voted on by 22 people as one of their top five figs now moving on to number 17 and yet again we're going to have one that's got these synonym problems now this is one that actually caused a large number of uh, problems and consternations for me and i had to wonder about what i would do because this fig which is figo preto is a fig that's sent to be uh, synonymous with potentially a number of figs and most importantly, Black Madeira, which is one of the most famous figs out there and that I'm sure everyone watching this video has at least heard of. Now, Figo Preto and uh, Black Madeira and Preto kept appearing in my list. And I had to decide what I was going to do with them. Would I keep them as three uh, separate kind of entities? Would I combine them? Would I somehow separate them differently? And what I chose to do in the end is I combined Black Madeira and Preto, just Preto alone, and I kept Vigo Preto separate. And the reason that I did that is because some people voted, or a number of people voted for Black Madeira slash Preto as a particular variety. And then maybe down their list a little bit further, they would say Vigo Preto. And to me, that implied that these were um, separate and distinct varieties. And enough, this happened enough times that I thought this is relevant enough that I'll separate them out. We'll keep the Black Madeira and the Preto distinction. And on the other hand, we'll also have the Figo Preto in case there's uh, some, some strong believers out there that these are different varieties. And there does seem to be a little bit of evidence that they are actually different varieties. People that are growing a Black Madeira in one pot and a Figo Preto in another pot have found that there's... Uh, the figo preto is potentially more vigorous. It's potentially a plant that leaves out earlier in uh, spring. It's a plant that potentially keeps its leaves earlier, uh, longer in winter or in autumn as the temperatures start to drop. So it does seem that growing side by side in the same condition, that these figs are potentially actually different. Now figo preto, uh, apparently it was found growing in California in a place called Point Loma uh, by a Portuguese, Portuguese lady who said that this tree was growing for more than 50 years in that spot. So it does seem to have a little bit of um, history behind it. Now another interesting thing about this particular class of figs, which is the Black Madeira, uh, this figo preto or preto, none of these varieties actually exist as a, as a variety that's common in Madeira Island in, in, uh, in, in um, Spain. This is a, a variety that seems to be potentially a marketing gimmick in America where uh, this may be the lineage has been traced back to Madeira Island, uh, but there isn't actually a fig of that variety on the island. So it's been renamed and kind of reintroduced to the market under this kind of new name. It's a dark fig, it has red interior, it has strong to complex berry flavours in there. Um, it's said to be an absolutely delicious fig, so it's definitely one that's worth trying if you can get your hands on it. Uh, it scored 68 points on my list, it's in the 17th position and it was voted on by 19 people. And moving straight along to position 16, now in 16 we have a fig 
that is another Mount Etna type fig. Now, if you've watched my previous video, you would have seen a few Mount Etna varieties appear. And Mount Etna, from uh, as a refresher, is, a, is an island in Sicily. Uh, it has a little bit of a microclimate going on where the figs that grow on Mount Etna are perhaps exposed to a cooler microclimate and are thus a little bit more hardy. And they share a whole bunch of characteristics with each other. Now, the red Lebanese variety that we're talking about here is the Bacar Valley variety. And there are commonly different red Lebanese varieties out there. The second most common variety is the Bass variety of red Lebanese. Now, this particular variety, though, the Bacar Valley one, is the only one that's considered a Mount Etna type. And this particular fig was introduced by another forum member named Marius in 2012, who brought it across from Lebanon. It's a dark fig, it's a small to medium sized fig, it has red to deep red interior, it is a cold hardy fig that's resistant to splitting and it has strong berry flavours. It's said to be a very very early ripener as well and it ripens earlier than even some of the other very early types such as Ronde Bordeaux and is a very popular fig for those reasons. Now I've found in my list that this particular fig has started to appear more popular uh, increased popularity since around 2018 and onwards and as that time has gone on it has developed more of a following but prior to that it seemed to have been relatively unknown. Now Red Lebanese Bacar Valley uh, scored 71 points on my list, voted on by 20 people as one of their top five figs. And moving forward, the next fig on our list is another French fig and this particular fig has been named after the shape of the fig. Now this fig is called Long Dute, which is a French name meaning Long of August. And it's been named this because it has a particularly uh, pronounced shape, as particularly in the Braba crop. It has a long extended fruit, it's a very, very large Braba, and it can sometimes exceed 100 grams for a particular fruit. Uh, this fruit is said to be, this fig is said to be synonymous with a fig called Nordlands, which is very popular in northern, which is very common in northern Europe. And some people again say that these are distinct varieties, but at least in my research, I've found that enough people have combined them together as the same fig that I've combined Nordlands and Longdoot as the same fig. And this is a potentially a very, very old fig from around the Versailles region in France. Uh, it's got documentation back as far as the 1700s, and uh, our old mate Ira Condit has spoken about this fig, although he is not very praising of this fig. He said of the Braber crop that is a little bit insipid and that the main crop is also not very interesting. Uh, this seems to be a little bit of the opposite of what the, the general crowd out there think about this particular fig, however, saying that although it's a honey to very light berry flavoured fig, it does seem to be a little bit more interesting than perhaps some of the other uh, honey type figs out there, being a little bit less linear and sometimes having some interesting flavours such as apricot or even mango in the fig flavour. So Long de Oot is one that appeared over and over again on my list. It's an extremely popular fig. It scored 81 points on my list and had uh, 25 people vote on it as one of their top five figs. Now moving on further, number 14 is a fig that has, again, interestingly different uh, descriptions based upon who was describing the fig. Now the fig is a sheer black and it is said that it is potentially a very old fig. Uh, according to Condit's monograph, this is a fig that was introduced to England by a gentleman by the name of Philip Miller in 1768. That was introduced apparently from the island of Ischia, and this fig was described as a dark fig of excellent flavour. Now, Condit then kind of said that there were a number of other researchers that uh, kind of studied this fig up into the 1900s. But today, when we talk about the Ishia Black, we are often talking about the fig that was developed by UC Davis in conjunction with the Wolf Skill Experimental Orchard in the mid-1900s when they were doing their fig and other fruit kind of breeding programs in the area. Now UC Davis for this particular kind of uh, type of uh, figs that they were growing is a little bit famous for another reason as well and that's being that the figs that came out of this program are often considered the worst affected with the fig mosaic virus out of any of the figs that you can kind of 
that in any of the fig trees that you can purchase. Now the fig mosaic virus, I'm sure you're all at least a little bit aware of, but it's a virus that affects fig trees in particular. And what it is, is that it goes in there and it can cause leaf deformities. It causes the shape of the leaves to not form particularly well. It causes a blotchy like kind of pattern on the leaf. Uh, and it's rarely fatal to a plant, but it can quite significantly reduce the figure. And for young cuttings, it can indeed be fatal, um, depending upon how infected the particular plant is. Now, the UC Davis figs that came out of that collection are often known and considered to be some of the worst affected by the fig mosaic virus out of all the figs you can purchase. And out of all of those, the uh, Ischia black is considered maybe one of the worst out of all of them. It's said to be a little bit lethargic in its growing. And some people say that it should be grafted onto a more vigorous rootstock to kind of help overcome the, um, the, the stunting that is being caused by this virus. And that's interesting because back when uh, Condit was studying this particular plant, he said it was a very vigorous plant. He said it was a, a tree that grew quickly in an upright form. And uh, he didn't describe any of these kind of um, lethargic um, kind of uh, things that has been coming out of the UC Davis breeding program. So another interesting thing that comes from the UC Davis program is that these particular figs of the uh, Ischia black have a reddish petiole, which is the part of the leaf which joins down to the stem. It's like a reddish brown color. Uh, Condit didn't describe this, although he did describe that the leaf the bud tips had kind of a reddy brown kind of appearance. So whether or not these are referring to the same thing, I'm not sure. Either way, the Ischia black today is still rated as an exceptional plant. If we can get over that kind of potential lethargy from the fig mosaic forest, it has um, a dark black skin. It has a deep red interior with a nice complex berry flavor. I have some uh, some plants out there, some Ischia black, and they are amongst the best in my collection as well. So very, very pleased about this particular plant. Uh, this fig scored 85 points on my list, uh, being voted on by 24 people as one of their top five figs. And moving into the 13th position. Now in 13, we have one of perhaps the most recognisable of all. If you were to look at all the figs, all the black figs, you could have a difficulty describing, oh, this is an Ischia black, or this is a, a, a black Madeira, or whatever the case might be. But this particular fig is so distinctive, almost anybody could describe it, and it is, of course, panache. And this is a green fig that has white to yellow variegations running from the top of the fig to the bottom. Now it's sometimes called a tiger fig because of these stripes and it's sometimes referred to as panache. Now it's said to be an either an old French or an Italian version, most likely being a French version, but it's, it's very difficult to actually say. It was described by an Italian naturalist of the name Ulissi Aldrovandi yeah, more around 350 years ago in 1668. He called it uh, Ficus Vigurta Fructu and it was described as a vergate fruit marked with alternating bands of green and yellow on a green, oh, on a green skin. Condit also said that he believed it was uh, researched by another researcher called Rousseau in 1826, which described a very, very similar fig, which was called Ficus carica radiata. Uh, and the variegations of this fruit, again, were the kind of defining feature of the fruit. Now, the, the skin and the shape and the colour of this fruit alone is one that should be one that you should be encouraged to have in your own collection. But the skin and the colouring is not the only reason you would have this fig because it also has an extremely deep red interior of exceptional flavour. It has a strawberry to raspberry-like interior and is uh, one of those figs that is just an all-rounder. It's one that you could add to your collection and very happily eat as well. Now, I actually grow this fig. I've got around four or five plants. Uh, I had a very bad fig season last year. We had a lot of rain, we had cold weather, we had a lot of wind. And I found that the majority of my panache fruit split. So it is, at least in my experience, a fig that is um, quite uh, susceptible to splitting. But this year we'll see they are very young figs. This will be their second or third year alive from cutting. So let's hope that they get a little bit better. 
in my list, uh, Panache came in the 13th position, scoring 91 points and were voted on by 26 people as one of their top five figs. Now in the 12th position, we have an interesting one. This is the first fig in our list that is actually a San Pedro type fig and it is of course the Desert King. Now when we talk about figs and we talk about types, we can talk about the uh, different species of figs, the different kind of very, uh, the varieties of figs, or we can talk about different types of figs. And figs have four common different types. We have the common type, which is the one we see majority of the time. They're a fig that uh, we can eat. They don't need any particular interventions for them to ripen their fruits, regardless of whether it's a main crop or a braber crop. They'll ripen that up, provided there's enough heat and light out there. And uh, these are the figs that we generally know. We have the Capri figs, and the Capri figs are the figs that contain the male parts of the figs. They contain the pollen, which can then be used uh, if a fig wasp is introduced to pollinate female figs and produce uh, figs with viable seeds. And so the Capri figs are the male type plants. We have Smyrna types. And Smyrna type figs require that fig wasp. They require the interaction between a fig wasp picking up that pollen and bringing it to the female fruit so that the fig can actually ripen. And without the fig wasp, all the fruits will come off the plant. And then finally, we have the San Pedro types of which the Desert King is. Now, the San Pedro types, they'll produce a braba crop without the help of a fig wasp, but they won't be able to ripen their main crop. And what this means is if you're in a um, kind of region that has short summers, maybe you don't, aren't able to ripen a main crop fig, then a braber crop is really, really important. And normally we come up with a little bit of a problem where with figs, the braber crop is, a, is not as desirable, it's not as good as the main crop of the fig. The Desert King is a little bit of an exception. Though. This is a fig that has an exceptionally good braber crop, which is very, very good. Eat. So if you've got a very short season, you can uh, have you can expect to have a really really good uh, braber crop which you can enjoy. And even if the main crop uh, can't be ripened because there's no fig wasp or it's too cold or there's not enough light, you can still have a fig tree in your yard that produces great figs. Now another, maybe not an issue, but another consideration with these San Pedro types is when you're growing them, you've got to be careful about the way you prune these figs. So if you prune them as you would a a normal common fig where we might prune them down quite harshly to keep their size limited, maybe to keep their shape to a specific size or, or form. With the San Pedro types, the Brebo crops will only grow on the second year it would. So if you trim it down too much, you'll actually chop off all your Brebo crops. And then unless you've got a fig wasp in your area, you'll also have all your main crops drop off. So sometimes they get a little bit of a bad name, these San Pedro types. The Desert King, however, is an exception. As I said, the Brebber crop is great, and if you prune it correctly, you should expect a number of fruits. This is a fig that was discovered around the 1920s and the 1930s, growing in Madeira, California, uh, and they're usually a medium to sometimes large to occasionally very large fruit. They have green skin with a reddish interior that's sometimes been said to have a honey berry flavour. And some people have said they're actually quite unique in their flavour, having almost a watermelon flavor in there. Uh, they're, they're a very, very popular fig. They're very, very common and uh, I've got one growing and I really hope that this year it puts off a fruit, but we shall see. Probably not because it'll only put off a main crop for me at least being a cutting this year. I don't think I have the fig wasp in my area. This particular fig scored 98 points on my list uh, with 24 people voting it in as one of their top five figs. And that brings us to number 11 on our list, the final one on our list for tonight, the final one before we get into the top 10 in our next video. And this is another Mount Etna type. This is another French fig, and it's called Marseille Black VS. Now, this particular fig is a fig that was said to have been brought across the US at the end of World War II, around 1941 to 1942 by a soldier who then uh, brought this cutting to his mother. And then this was then presented uh, by Herman II uh, to the forums, to the Figs for Fun forums again. And uh, he kind of propagated it and sent it out there as another great fig for the community to enjoy. Now the name Messiah Black VS, VS stands for the actual initials of Herman II. 
and uh, considering he put his initials in the name, I'm sure he's happy for his name to be out there, although I'm sure I'm going to butcher his name, but his name is Vasil Surugio. And if that's wrong, and if someone knows how to pronounce that better, chuck it in the comments below. I won't screw it up next time, probably. This is a great fig. It's another Mount Etna type. So it has the small to medium figs. It's a black fig. It has a red to deep red interior. It has berry to complex to intense berry flavors. It's extremely cold hardy. In fact, this particular fig is cold hardy down to around negative 17 degrees Celsius or zero degrees Fahrenheit. Another interesting thing about this particular fig is that it's an extremely prolific fig. It's a fig that you can expect to get heaps and heaps of figs off. And in fact, some people have called it a feed a nation fruit, which means that if you were to have one planted in every yard or every second yard in the country, there'd be enough fruit from it to feed an entire nation. So Messiah Black uh, VS, it's another one of those great figs. And Herman II, again, coming in, he obviously introduced Floria uh, to us, which appeared on our list as well. So adding some great things to the community. Uh, this is a, an excellent fig. It scored 119 points on my list. It was voted on by 31 people as one of their top five figs. And it rounds off our list today. It finishes it off. Uh, that's our 10 figs for now. Uh, that means that our next list is going to be our top 10 to 1. So I'm not sure how quickly it's going to be for me to get that list out. I'm going to try my best not to have a, a long gap in it. I'm going to try to get it out in a week or hopefully less than two weeks. I've got an extremely busy calendar happening in the next couple of weeks, so I do want to try to balance everything together. But in the meantime, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you picked up a couple of uh, bits and pieces that you didn't know or you, you thought would add value to your life here today. If you did enjoy it, you know all the things you need to do, the liking and the subscribing and all that sort of thing. And again, as I said in my last video, if you'd like to have a stab and a guess at the top 10 figs, well, now is your last time to do that. Chuck your thoughts in the comments below. And if you've got any other thoughts at all, put them all in there. And again, I thanks everybody for coming along and having that patience to uh, kind of wait for this next video to come from me. So guys, I'll let you go. Thank you all. And I guess I'll just have to see you all in the next one. See you later.